Now, my famous, if I can call it that, shad trace that I use 99% of the time is a drift sardine. I'm going to show you how to rig it. There are two or three variations of the same trace. The fundamentals stay the same, but I'm going to show you now my one that I enjoy using the most. And believe me guys, when I tell you that you'll catch more than two shad on it, I've caught more than two shad on it on numerous occasions. Very simply what we need, some nylon, swivel, sinker, a heavy duty hook that is reasonably thick. I'll show you later on why it has to be a thick hook and an inline hook, not one that is offset. Offset causes the bait to actually twirl in the water when I'm retrieving it slowly. Uh, 30 pound, 40 pound, you can use 60 pound if you want. But the lighter you go, the easier it is to actually make the trace and work with. Start off. Hmm. Hook selection is up to you. I'm using 9227s. Two of them. Old trusty hooks, been around for a long time, work extremely well. To make the trace, I'm just going to use a figure of eight. Basically, you're just going around your finger once, twice, through the loop, forming the figure of eight. Pull the figure of eight tight, if you want to call it that. Lubricate, put your fingers in there, take a pair of pliers and just Make sure that that actually pulls down on itself. Slide it down to where the hook is. Pull the hook tight. Give yourself at least 10 inches of wire. Cut them off. I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. The wire is so light, it's easy to use. Second hook. In the same area or facing the same direction as the last hook and I always try and place the bend of the hook in line with the eye of the other hook so that there is no gap you can spread it out a little bit but I find it's way better if you have it closer so there's my two hooks and all I'm going to do is snell it go through the top of the hook like that and pull tight. Okay, next I'm going to take some nylon and it's a nylon to wire figure of eight again. Very simply, the wire, the nylon, you're going to wrap around your finger three times. Once, twice, three times, forming a figure of eight. Pull it reasonably tight, pull it down to the eye of the hook turn it around and take the wire part and you want to go around twice once twice there's your figure of eight and now I can move it up and down I'm just going to stick it next to it I want to keep it quite short because it is a small sardine lubricate move the nylon to where the actual wire is pull tight pull tight and pull tight Cut off all the tag ends. There we go. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is measure out the length of my actual sardine that I'm going to be using for bait. Now the first hook you always want to keep near the tail area because that is where the shad on a drift bait normally eats first. So I'm going to keep it about that length. That one there and over here with my thumb is, is where I want to tie my next hook and the reason we use a very thick hook is when I throw that the hook doesn't tear out of the nose of the actual sardine okay we do not use cotton anywhere else on the bait except on the nose area so it's as natural as can be so again I'm just going to take it and snell it I'm 
putting the eye, uh, the nylon through the top, sliding it down. And like I said before, I'm just measuring it out for this particular size sardine, and that's exactly where I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna snell it there. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Pull that tight. There it is. And now I'm going to add a small light sinker. You can fish it if you're fishing in a bay where there's no wave movement without a sinker. But it definitely works better if you can use a little bit of weight. It just cuts down your waiting time for your sardine to actually sink down to the depth that you want it to be. So what we do, just put a very light quarter ounce sinker on it. We then take a swivel, tie the swivel to the trace, Now what happens with this trace is when it hits the water, the sinker slides down and pulls the sardine down. And when you get to the depth that you require, you start winding and the sinker starts coming back to the nose of the actual sardine. So when you're winding it, that it actually stays straight. Now to rig it, it's very simple. Take the first hook. Insert it along the spine, but just under the skin, and pull it out. We don't do anything else than that. We take the second hook, same area along the spine, but further back. Stick it in quite deep, slide it back, and then just to get the measurement 100%, depending on how far back we put it, just before the eyes. If you can see over here, there's the eyes. You actually want to put that hook so it sits like that inside the sardine. So we take it there, under the jaw, right up, and you'll feel it's quite a hard piece of um, bone over there in the head. And that's pretty much how the whole trace looks like. You can throw that quite hard and it won't come off. If you find that you've got soft sardines, you can wrap a little bit of cotton, and I'm gonna show you now what you can do. Just take a bit of latex cotton. And what we do is we just stick it on the eye of the hook over there. I don't know if you saw that. And then just wrap it around the back and then around the front. Back, front, back, front, back, front. And just carry on going like that. And then to finish it off, we just wrap it around three times around that part of it, the top part and the bottom part. And that's basically your whole trace as far as a drift sardine goes. You can throw it in the water and it'll actually swim pretty much like that along as it's going. The shad comes, he bites the tail part, he swims off and his mate comes along and bites on the second part. As you know, um, shad are very aggressive feeders when they are feeding and you can catch two shad on one trace. Okay, very very simple. If you're fishing competition, and here in the tell, um, we fish two hooks only. And on the straight you can see there's three. To get away from that, I'm just going to cut it off and just tie another one just to show you that you can use the same trace. Okay, I'm just going to show you how to make an egg for clip quickly for this trace. Number 12, number 14 wire, whatever it tickles your fancy. Make a haywire twist. I'm going to make a small one quickly. <coughs> okay, basically that. Do it like that. I'm going to take this little part here, bend it back. Over, so you see what I'm basically doing. That's what I'm doing. 
I'm going to take this and just bend it over again, over the opposite side, just to form a little bit of a clip. Force that up. Move it back to where it was. So basically I've just made a little egg for clip if you would like to call it that. Take it loose and show you how to rig it. Again, very simple. Snell it onto my trace. Back through the eye. Pull tight. Lock that down a bit more. And find another side in. There we go. Measure off where I want it to be. Let's use the back side of the sardine here a bit. So that one is a lot smaller. Just try to the tail because it's a smaller trace, a smaller sardine, sorry. Slide those all the way down. Take my clip and once again go through the top part of the jaw over there. Take this part now and actually close it over it. And there's that Igfo clip all rigged, ready to go. So when it comes to competition fishing here in Natal, I'm only allowed two hooks. That's how I would throw it if I was fishing competition, guys. Very simple, works like a dream. Okay, very simply.